We have a special guest today, and it is Jennifer's Aunt Jerry, and she's going to be doing a recipe today that's really, really good. It is, and it's a family tradition, longtime family tradition in our family, and she's going to share it with all of you. So, come, come on, on in! in. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Shotgun Red, and I'm Jennifer, and Miss Sheila is still down in Alabama with her mom for the holidays, but I have a special guest visiting for the holidays, my Aunt Jerry. I'm so glad she's here, and she is my dad's twin sister, and so she's like, you know, she's like a second mom. <laughs> we have lots of moms here on the show, <laughs> and so we're going to do a family recipe it's from North Dakota. My grandmother was Icelandic and my grandfather was Norwegian. And she wanted to hand down some of these recipes to us girls and guys in the family. And it's just our interpretation of the Kleiners that she makes. It's kind of like a, a donut and cookie combination, but it's cooked like a donut. It's, they call it like a Christmas cookie, right? Yes, it is. And uh, it, everybody makes it differently, but uh, this is how we're going to do it today. But, but I think you'll really enjoy it. They're amazing, and they're great for dunking in coffee, and they're, they're like the perfect amount of sweet. They're not too sweet, but sweet enough yeah. to, you know, where you can have them in your coffee or some milk or whatever. We're, we're always like, when, when it, she used to ship out Kleiners to us from California. <laughs> She'd overnight a whole bag if she couldn't get here for the holidays, so it's definitely a tradition. <laughs> and once you start eating them, you won't be able to stop. I know it's like definitely like be potato chips it's because like of the, going. the spice that we put in a cardamom it's kind of addicting and they put it in a lot of breads and different desserts but I think uh, that's the main ingredient we have in this recipe and I think you'll enjoy it. I think so too and we got Steve's stand mixer out for this one because you definitely want to use a mixer with this um, because it's it's pretty tough. I mean you could do it by hand but it would it would take you a it, while. Yes it's, <laughs> it's really uh, because it has to be mixed and to a dough that you can roll out and it's quite heavy so you need a heavy mixer to be able to do this. All right so I'm gonna let her show us how it's done. The first thing we're gonna do is take some buttermilk a half a cup to three-fourths but I'm going to add a little bit of baking soda to this, a teaspoon. And Grandma always said stir it up and let it foam a little bit. And it's almost like a science project when you're doing this. It's kind of amazing, you know, when things start uh, getting a little bit uh, fuller. And then I'm going to put a little bit of sour cream in here. And it, this is about a half a cup and, uh, and all this together, it starts foaming, which uh, I think it helps the cleaners get a little bit softer and fuller and tender. So I'm going to put this in the mixer. And I'm going to start adding other things to it. Now this is kind of foamy, this uh, buttermilk and sour cream. And lots of times if you don't have buttermilk, you can always, I'm using both buttermilk and real milk and sour cream all together. But if your recipe calls for buttermilk, just add half sour cream and half milk. And that will give you buttermilk. And I'm going to add some more. So you're going to get all that out of the, out of the bottom too. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I'm kind, and I'm kind of messy too. So, <laughs> but you know what? Uh, at least I'm not saying any bad words. That's right. Because the because last time we did this, it was, oh, beep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, beep. I have a bad habit of, of saying one word that starts with an S. <laughs> and, uh, and my grandkids always say, grandma, you don't cuss. They're just shocked when it comes out of my mouth. So that was what? Milk? That was a cup of milk. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the mixer and just start mixing this up low. low. And then I'm going to add a little vanilla, one teaspoon of vanilla. And then I'm going to add four eggs. 
And those are room temperature, right? Yes, it's it's best if you have room temperature. If you don't, it's all right. But it, most bakers want to have eggs at room temperature. So I'm going to mix this up a little bit just to. What I'm going to start doing is I'm going to add a little bit of flour to this, just about a, a spoonful. And, and we don't really measure the flour because it goes by consistency, right? Yes. And the flour, uh, the amount we use is a lot. <laughs> we, we looked at Grandma's, her notes, and it says a lot of flour. <laughs> it didn't give any amount, just a lot of flour. <laughs> now I'm bringing out the sugar. I'm bringing out our cardamom, which is the flavoring, is delicious, and some baking powder. And the cardamom is how much? I put in uh, two and a half spoons. spoons of ground. If you have the seeds, that is the best because it's stronger and, um, and it gives more flavor. But they're so hard, the seeds, you have to grind them or you put them in a plastic bag and take a hammer to it and break them up and that really is a better flavor but we have the we have the ground which is just as good but and then I have I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of salt I'm gonna put two and a half uh, baking powder and then one and a teaspoon right? teaspoons okay. yes I'm sorry <laughs> She's used to just I'm not used to being there. on camera <laughs> I just throw things together and then this is two and a half uh, cardamom Teaspoons. Teaspoons, okay. And it calls for four cups of sugar. So I'm going to add a little bit of sugar to this. And uh, just a little at a time so it gets mixed. Just pour the rest in here. I love that little bowl. Yeah. It's nice. I think equipment when you're cooking is so important. And that has a little spout, so it's easy for things to flow out. And you don't get it all over. Exactly. That's great. And it's a good size because you can use that for all kinds of things. It's perfect. Now I'm going to start adding flour. And if I put it all in at once, it'd be all over the kitchen. So. <laughs> yeah. It, and that happens. It, yeah. Well, the last time we tried this, it was all over the kitchen. So we're, yeah. try, we're trying to be a little yeah. better today. Yeah. I think uh, you almost have to be a sloppy cook to get anything that tastes good. Hey, My sloppy cooks taste, <laughs> make great taste in food. No I've, I've never been neat. And it has to come to a soft dough where you can roll it out like pie crust or something and or cookie. And uh, you don't want it too stiff, but you don't want it too soft because it's hard to, to cut and then try to cut it into a, a shape that you want to deep fry. Okay, I'm going to put flour on this surface here, and I'm going to just put a little, a little bit here, and it's a little, still a little sticky, but I'd rather have it a little sticky. It makes the uh, clients a little more tender, and uh, so I'm going to just take a little bit of this flour and kind of just press it into that dough, and you always want to keep this floured. So it, after you cut it, you want to be able to lift it off of the counter. And lots of times you want to, if you have a sock to put over your rolling pin, they have these cloth socks that help. And you don't, uh, it seems to roll out your dough nicely. But this being a heavy, heavy wow. rolling pin, it really works nice because you don't have to put a lot of pressure. You don't want it too thin, but you don't want it too thick. Then I take a little roller that Italians use for a lot of their pastries and their doughs. And I use this and I dunk it in to some flour. And I'm going to start rolling because we're going to, this is how our design of our Kleiner is going to be. And you just go straight across like this. And it just makes the edges look a little nicer. You could probably use anything. But now I'm going to go to a different angle. And I'm going to go across to this way. I'm going to go it across like this. And just keep dipping it in flour? Yeah. And uh, it's a little on the sticky side, but... As we get going, it, it it'll, a little bit it'll, better. It'll get better. But this gives it the design of the Kleiner. Now I'm going to just put a little bit of a hole 
here in each one because I'm going to turn them. I'm taking a little spatula getting underneath it so it doesn't stick. And uh, That's a good idea. Yeah, and uh, then I can lift it up. And here I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to turn it inside out like that because a lot of them will turn out looking like body parts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and that always gives everybody a laugh. Yeah. Or states. Yeah. You know, they start shaving yeah. them like, yeah. like when I tried to make tortillas the first time, uh -huh. they kind of like looked like states. They didn't really look like round tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to turn this into a little knot and lay it on a cookie sheet. So you're sheet. just taking one of the corners one and the you're corners, just taking it rolling through the it hole. into that hole yeah. and turning it turning inside, it inside out. out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which creates the shape. Uh-huh. It just gives it a different look. And like I say, my cousins do it by just making cliners out of a ball. Just making a ball like a donut. And they'll deep fry it and then put powdered sugar on it. And that's the way they like to do it. Oh, yeah. Because it's a lot easier than going through this. But but you know what? This makes it easy to dunk in your coffee and your yeah. milk. <laughs> and, you know, you just don't want to get away from that tradition of oh, yeah. how Grandma and used to do it and this is our great grandma's recipe yeah my grandma's and their great grandma's we've got two blocks of lard and equal amount of uh, Crisco. Crisco in here and you melt that and you could do it with just with Crisco because it's healthier but the lard is what gives it the flavor and so we brought and this temperature up to to about 375 okay and so I just I just threw a tester in here to, to make sure that ready for all the rest of the climb. As you put more in, it cools down, so you have to check it every once in a while. It'll it'll cool off. Yeah, when you start at like 375 degrees, mm -hmm. when you start adding them in, it probably will drop to about 325. Yeah, and you need it to stay about 250 to 325. Yeah, when you're frying. So I'm gonna. I made a little ball here, and this is kind of what my cousins do. They'll make little balls and put powdered sugar on it instead of going through all the process that I'm going through. But it's, I'm just used to that. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that out, and I'm going to start putting my cleaners in. And sometimes people make them a little thicker, but I, uh, mine are fairly thin, because they'll bloat up, get a little fuller. But they're perfect for dunking. Yes, and they, they do taste wonderful. You know, once you get to eating them, you won't stop. My uh, kids and grandkids, they love these, and they always look forward to Christmas in, at home. And this year I'm going to have to make these for them after I get home in January because they always look forward to having the cleaners. Now, they'll, you know, after a little bit, you're going to have to um, flip them over so they brown on the other side. Yeah, you just want them like a nice golden brown color? Yeah. Mm hmm Don't those look good? Uh, if you make them a lot, you probably get professional at making them look prettier than what we do, what I do. They look pretty to us. But they taste good. <laughs> they do taste good. <laughs> and everybody's waiting anxiously for them right now. <laughs> so we would just have a piece of paper towel laying on a tray that yes. you're going to just mm -hmm. get the excess oil off of, right? Yeah. That's right. My grandmother's uh, cleaners were always so beautiful and perfect, but uh, it just, I think if you make them enough, you learn. And uh, she was a great cook. Well, Aunt Jerry, this looks so good. Doesn't it? Yum. And we took some of the extra pieces and you made some little balls mm -hmm. and we shook it up in some powdered sugar. And, you know, that would, that makes quite a bit. Yes. I mean, if you've got a big family and that's why she would bag them up and send them off to people. Yeah. <laughs> You could cut that in half if you didn't want to make quite that many, but we're, we're making them for the whole family. So, yeah. And the yeah. leftover dough, we just made little balls, and I think a lot of people would want to do that if it's easier for them, but uh, we like to do the traditional. Yummy, grandma. yum, yum. Okay, well, I think that we should try it. What do you think? I think so. Okay, well, I'm going to take this one right here, and I'm going to dunk it in my coffee. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's try it. Mmm. Mm. 
real tender. A little crispy on the outside. Got our coffee mug. Mm. These are so good when you mm. dunk them in mm. the coffee or your milk. Mmm. Mm. The mm. perfect amount of sweet. Mm-hmm. You know? Perfect. Mmm. This is so good. You are gonna love these. Well, as Steve would say, are these the best homemade Kleiners? If it, it ain't. ain't it ought to be. Thanks again for liking and sharing and subscribing. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and visit shotgunred.com. And you can get all kinds of goodies there. We have our new aprons, yes, our cookbook, the Shotgun Red doll, and so much more t shirts, all kinds of goodies. So be sure to check that out at shotgunred.com and visit our store. Also, join our free membership because you'll be like the first to hear about all the goodies we got coming up and you'll get exclusive giveaways and discounts there and you're gonna love it. So join us and we'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Bye. Well, that's she, she and Jen, Jen, them two girls having too much fun. We hope you enjoy this recipe and we really hope you subscribe to our channel. That's easy. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here in a little bit. When you click on it, it'll say subscribe. Then you're subscribed. Next to it, it'll be a little notification bell. If you click that little bell, then YouTube will send you every single one of our recipes or a notification that we posted one as soon as it comes out. See you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Is this the best? If it ain't, it ought to be.